Hi everyone, this is Kyle Cordes again at Oasis Digital and Angular Bootcamp. Uh, my usual reminder, at Oasis Digital, we develop complex, rich web applications. At Angular Bootcamp, we train you to do the same. And uh, if you think you might want to work with us, come visit our careers page. Okay, back to the coding. We are on session five. So, uh, as usual, I made a commit at the end of the last session, although I think I clipped that out of the video to save time. Uh, the thing we had last finished was dividing this uh, application into three components. It's still the top level application component that now has basically nothing in it except for using one other component. We have this pair history, so this is a foreign currency exchange pair history component. And then we have divided that into a so-called smart component, and that's the thing that knows how to get the data. The smart component uses the async pipe to get the observable data to be bound into a view component, and then that view component displays the data on the screen that it takes as a plain input. I've been uh, jotting down a little bit of a things to do list in between each of these coding sessions. And the next thing on my list is to parameterize this component. So we have a component here, and right now it's just hard coded to always show data for a certain currency pair. So I'm going to uh, make this where you can pass it a parameter when you use it, and you can tell it what currency pair to use. So let's just do this in kind of the, I guess, the most straightforward way. Um, this thing needs an input. We're going to say that that's called pair and is of type string. And then uh, I missed those guys. Input is imported from Angular Core. Uh, by the way, there are four or five different add ons for uh, Visual Studio Code that would automatically do these imports for me, but I've not installed any of those yet on this copy of VS Code. So I'm just importing by hand uh, the old fashioned way. Okay, so I need to do instead of this guy, I can say this dot. Pair. Okay, so this might be enough. Uh, one thing that's worth noting here is that I'm still constructing this whole observable chain in the constructor, even though at runtime it uses data that has been passed in via a binding. Um, I could choose to put this in on init, and that would defer doing this until this value is known. But I don't think that would really help me to do that because I would still have the problem of I want this behavior to change if you change this data midstream. Um, so I don't think it would be helpful to just move it to on init. I also thought about moving this to on changes, and that would have the effect of any time anyone changed this input parameter, we would recreate the observable chain. But I really don't think that's desirable either. Um, I think it's probably better to, to leave this observable chain intact than just change the data we're sending through it with time. Uh, one wrinkle is that right now, uh, with this, this current design you see, if I change this input string midstream, then, then my buffer is going to have a combination of both. And it, it, there are better ways to do this. So I could do some more sophisticated observable programming later that would both avoid recreating the observable chain and avoid uh, deferring creation of this un until a later event, but at the same time uh, also avoid having a mixed buffer. It's just that seems not worth it because what we have here is plenty good enough for um, almost any use I can think of right now. Okay, so I have this thing called pair, and it was EUR slash USD. So I need to go at the point of use, which is right here, and then simply set this guy. Now, I believe in this case, because it's just a string value, I can get by without using the binding syntax. So let's give this a shot. Program should still be up and running. I guess I want to keep my, uh, keep my console visible so I know when it restarts. There we go. Oh, I guess it's, it, had, it had just restarted. Oh, well. Okay, so I've restarted it again, and then we should see that the data is still flowing. And sure enough, it is. So that latest change did not break anything. Um, one thing that's in interesting is uh, I actually don't remember what any of the other pairs are. And although there's, there's four or five different ways to do that, I'm going to use that as an excuse to point out another observable operator. So most people have probably used this one. It's an operator do. Now, you can simulate do by doing a map and then just passing the original value through. But I think it's better to uh, use do when you're performing some operation purely to have a side effect. 
So uh, let me see here, so FX. So because I'm doing this purely for a side effect, it is better if I simply, uh, let's see, console log fx.symbol. It's better if I use do because that makes it obvious to a human reader that I am calling this function purely for its side effects, not because I want to affect the observable chain. Okay, so now I'm, I'm just, I did this so I could spot a couple of other combinations, and I would say this one here, the first one on the list, is as good as any. So now I don't need that anymore, but I do want to make use of a second instance of the component like so. Okay, so now I should get two lists, right? And they're unlabeled at this point, I guess. I can, oops, I better pause and grab a phone here. Okay, back in action. So the, uh, the difficulty of what we just saw is they were unlabeled. So I think the next worthy thing to fix is the labeling. I thought about fixing the labeling here, but this is the smart component. And when you're using this uh, smart slash view component pattern, you're, you're really better off keeping all of the view in the view. And so uh, this guy has the, this pair identifier. I believe it's best to go ahead and tell the view component what the pair is also. So now it will know the pair. And then the same line can be brought in here. So now the template here will have the pair available. And I can label this thing. Let's use an H3. And there's lots of different ways to do this, but we'll make this a quick and easy one. So now we should get each of these two lists labeled. Okay, so this seems, this seems pretty appealing. Um, in fact, it seems appealing enough that I think it's, it's good to commit it. So I'm going to say parameter is the pair history component set. Okay, so uh, now we've parameterized it, and that, that's very nice. We have this nice improvement to the software, but there's something ugly living in here. And if you look closely right here, do you see how we see low freak, which is that SSE, that uh, server sent event source? Then we see another low freak. This, this program is actually subscribing twice, right? So we have this nice observable chaining based system used, but we're actually subscribing and downloading the data from the server twice to populate two different parts of the screen. And that's very bad. No one wants that. That's, that's not a desirable design in any way. Um, uh, you can think about ways to do this. Like I, I could maybe maybe move all the logic back up to the app component. Maybe move all the logic back in here, and then write some sort of switch statement that would would you know kind of send the the data different directions. And there's lots of ways to do that. But I think I can get by without doing any of those because uh, in, you'll never guess this if you haven't watched so far. I think I can do this by adding another observable operator. Um, there's an observable operator called share. And what share does is uh, share acts as, uh, well, it's sort of a reference counted automatic sharing of an observable. So if I simply go to my, let me see here, where do I want to go? I guess I want to go to my FX data service. So I go to the point that I created the observable and say, share this observable. Okay. Now, if I'm, if I'm going to use another operator, I need to import that operator to make it available. Um, maybe in a later video, I will point out why you have to do this and why there's some upcoming future improvements that will make it go away. But in the, in the meantime, we will just do it. So I have to add the share operator. So share operator has excellent and perfect semantics for our needs. Um, initially, share will do nothing. There's still, like, we won't automatically connect. But the first time uh, any part of the code tries to subscribe to this observable, it'll cause the un so when it tries to subscribe to this observable, it'll cause the underlying observable, the one right here, to, to connect, to subscribe. But then it will serve as a sort of a, a multiplexer so that if an additional uh, part of the code also subscribes to this observable, the one at my cursor, it will simply get another copy of the same data coming out of this observable. So just by adding this handful of characters, I should get exactly the right behavior, which is that by having two different uh, of these components on my screen, I should now have only a single low freak connection. And sure enough, there I do. There's just the one exactly as I expected. 
Uh, by the way, these uh, these other these ones that mentioned SockJS, these are part of the Angular CLI automatic reload mechanism. So these ones that so these SockJS, we're not using SockJS, we're using SSE. So this low freak, this is what this program is using, and these bottom two, this is part of that automatic reload mechanism. Okay, so that's a great change. It's a tiny change, it's a great change. I've worked on many substantial systems that made a hundred or maybe a thousand times as many changes to achieve this benefit and did it with more bugs and more difficulty. So I'm actually gonna make that its own commit. So share one server connection for N components. So that's a great little improvement. I would encourage projects to structure themselves in a way that they can write code like that. Okay, what else can we do here? Um, I think one last thing to try to fit in today on this session would be, uh, as I look at this, I had to go do that little hacky thing with the do and the, and the, the console print line to find out what all feeds were coming through, you know, what, what all symbols were coming through. So what I'd really like to do is I'd like to have another component that just lists all the different pairs that have come through and I don't know, maybe it concludes the most recent timestamp of each. So let's look for a good place to do that. Well, so, uh, it, when I first started, I would have started coding that in here, but that's, that's not a great idea. I, I don't want to code it right in there. I want to code it in some kind of more reasonable place. So let's just follow the same pattern again. Oh, this, this is my server that I have running. You can see the word server up there. So here's my client that I have running. So let me, oh, by the way, this right here is because I had I had apparently let it had tried to execute before I had added the operator share at the top. So the, don't worry about that error. Um, okay, so ng generate component. We'll call this. Is it a what would we call this thing? I think we called them pair pair history. We'll call this a. So this is a currency pair list. And then I believe, just like last time, I will assume I want a view component separately from my smart component. Um, and I'll do the same sort of uh, cleanup. So once again, even though for complicated production code, we always write tests for anything that need them, uh, for this little exercise, I'm going to skip these tests or specs for the sake of time and not being too boring. Uh, and then this perilous, this is a smart component, so it shouldn't have any meaningful display characteristics anyway, so it does not need a CSS file, and it does not need a reference to that CSS file. Um, last, uh, next, there's probably not a need for ng on init in any of this code, so I will simply peel that back out also. Um, here, I guess I can pick up a few loose ends just like that. So now I should still have a valid program. So let me get the uh, get the CLI serve back up and running here. We'll give this a moment just to verify it comes up without this property share error. Make sure that we're, we're launching cleanly. And sure enough, we are, okay. Um, okay, so I'll refresh this. Oops. And we should be back up and running and there's data flowing just like it was before because we haven't really done anything. I was just uh, putting in a, a kind of the shell of, a, of the next feature. Okay, so this is the pair list. The pair list, we want that to appear, uh, probably we'll have it appear at the top. And then the pair list view should be the only contents of the template here. So I guess this is a good a good point to uh, to wish for the future. When I make a smart component over in the world of React, I can use a thing called a higher order component and I don't have to kind of go through all the machinery as if I was making a visual component when I'm making this higher order non-visual wrapper or container component. But currently, as of Angular, I guess 2.3, uh, you have to go through this extra ceremony, and I'm really hoping something appears in a future Angular which gives us the equivalent uh, kind of a conciseness of what we have over in, in, in React with uh, container components or higher order components or, or whatever you want to call them. So Angular team, we're begging, please, please give us that. 
Okay, so this pair list, I want it to grab a hold of that incoming data stream and then collect all of the distinct values that are uh, that are coming in from the uh, from the other side. So let's see here. What's the best way to do that? Well, I believe the pair history already knows how to how to subscribe. So let's let's go ahead and take that. I need to close some things I'm not using right now. Uh, come on. Um, I don't need that. Okay, so my pair list also will need my data service. And then it will need to see the type. So we'll put that in. Uh, what else might it need from here? It seems very, very likely to need this type for the FX quote. So I'll go ahead and bring that typing over. And then I think I'm probably going to need some of this stuff. So I'm going to put this in. And what I'll do is I'll just leave it sitting here for a moment. And when I see what I don't use, I'll take it out. Although I can probably guess that I'm probably not going to use buffer count or filter or concat. Probably not going to use do. Maybe I'll need it later, not going to need range. So I'm pretty sure I'll need map, and I'll probably need some other things also. Okay. So now we need to figure out what data we're collecting and what to do with it. Well, the, so the, the input data I have, this, this is pretty simple. So right, right here I have it. So the, this, this FX data system is helping me too much. Wow, it's really helping me too much. There. Okay, so now I have an observable of each of these coming through. And the output I want, I believe, should be a... Well, I, I either want a list or I want a map of some kind. So I want some sort of list or map or set of the most recent quotes. So that's one way to think about it. How about if I thought of it this way? What if I said, I'd like to aim toward having a set of the most recent quotes. Now, if I tried to use a, a JavaScript ES6 TypeScript set for that, then it wouldn't really have exactly the right semantics because if I stuck another quote in the set, it wouldn't overwrite the existing one. So I think maybe what I'll aim for first is a map. So I, I, I want to end up with, and I'll have to deal with some of the typing here later, I, I want to have some kind of a map, and I want it to be from a string, which is the symbol, and I want it to be to an FX quote. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to need something like this along the way. So we'll, uh, I'm going to get this text in here because I know I'll need it. Um, so the question is, how do I go about processing this incoming stream here and getting some, kind of doing some computation with each thing that arrives? Well, I know of a low-level thing to do that called reduce, but before I code it with reduce, I try to always look for high-level things that might be just a little bit closer to what I want. So I have this habit of just skimming through and trying to spot things that, that might be helpful, that might do something sort of what I want. No, combine, this combines, uh, no, that, 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 that won't help me. Um, let me see here. Yeah, nothing, Ellen, every, yeah. okay. So there's nothing really obvious here that would help. So I think I'm probably just, just gonna go straight to reduce. So here's how reduce works. You give it an initial value and you give it a function. And then as each new value uh, comes in, it, as it comes on the observable chain, it will call your function with that accumulated value and then with the new value that's arriving. And uh, the great thing about this is that you're sort of getting statefulness without having to ever write any direct stateful code yourself. So what I want to do here is I, I want to reduce. And then when I reduce, the first parameter is a reducer and the second param is an initial value. So uh, we said that the probably the, the type of this thing is probably going to be that. So this reducer needs to be a function and the function needs to have an accumulator and it is of this type. So I, I knew I would need that type. So that type. And then it's going to need a current, it's going to take a current value 
and then that's going to be of the type fx quote because that's what's coming down the observable chain okay so um, let's give this a name so we'll call this accumulate most recent quote okay so that's a reasonable name for that okay so I give the reduce I give it that function and I, I need to give it a new map so I need to give it an initial em empty map and then it looks like it's complaining about reduce so I need to ask for reduce so now I should have reduce available and what's going on here so something is not quite right with my types ah so I have not declared a return type here and I actually simply need to tell TypeScript that that's what's going to come back out of the thing. Now it's complaining here because I haven't returned anything yet, uh, but it, I, just to make the thing a valid program, I can return the accumulator. So this seems, this seems possi possibly workable, but now I need to make this work. So I need to take this thing and the following is slightly ugly code because I'm going to mutate this accumulator in place and I probably shouldn't do that but just to get up and running I'm going to take the accumulator and I'm going to set a value and it's going to be based on the so that, that string that'll be which one I'm setting and then I want to set it actually I want the symbol out of that to that thing okay so now Now at this point in the code, I should have an observable, and it's, uh, it's parameterized by this type, okay? Now, a map is probably not the most useful type to expose to a template. It's probably more helpful for the template if I were to expose a list, because I can put that list in a reasonable order. So let's go ahead and map, oddly enough, that thing. So, this is going to, I think I'll call this ACK again because it's sort of in a, think of it as being the accumulator. So I want to take, I get the typing right here. So I open a print and I paste it. So I take that thing and then I need to return something. And I might need to write a couple lines of code here. So I kind of get prepared to do that. Um, so what I, I'd like to convert this thing from a, map to a sorted list. So how do we do that? Let me see here. So let's just find out if it has any so entries maybe? Entries that probably I wonder if entries oh values. Values should actually this should actually be an array. So this this should be an array of those values. Uh, so now I probably just need to sort those. And I, I wonder if it's safe to mutate that thing. So let's let's find out. Oh, let me see here. It's, what if, if I just return them, now I just have an array. So if I do this, I'll have an unsorted array. And tell you what, just to avoid getting too bored here, I probably should proceed with getting this data onto the screen and then come back. So the type of the data that's going to be available to put on the screen is, uh, we're gonna call these latest, quote for each symbol. So I probably should have a more concise name, but this will do for now. And I've intentionally made these an array. I really, I'd like to sort that array. It's kind of one of the, one of the rules of Angular 2 is you're really supposed to sort these things in order. Oh, let me fix my, fix my code there. Okay, so this is really, it's, it's actually an observable of that type. Right, because remember, we uh, when you start with an observable, you generally end up with an observable, and you want to use the async pipe to get it on the screen. So uh, that is what I really need to set here. Okay, uh, not assignable to type something is not ideal here. So. Uh, something is not right. So what did I do here? So I had an observable of the, so this is an observable of the quotes that are coming down the pipe. We're reducing them and then the output, what's the output of reducer? The output of reducer should be, yeah, it's an observable, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna it should be that, it should be that observable type. It should be this type here. And then we map those in. In fact, you know what? I probably can just say ack here because it should already reason about the type. Um, 
and then act.values, oh, that's an iterable iterator. <laughs> And I want an array. Um, I'm not quite sure how to get an array, but I wonder if I can use the spread operator to get an array. No, I guess not. How do you get an array from an iterable iterator? That is not immediately clear to me how to get an, from an iterable iterator. I don't use those very often. I'm going to pause and go look that up so we don't have a protracted session here while I do that. It turns out to be quite simple that uh, the, the array from constructor actually can take an iterable iterator. So that should be all I need to do. Let me see here. So not iterable. Array from. So what does array from do? It's an, it takes an, works from an array like object. And an array like. I probably need to parameterize this thing, right? I probably need to tell it that it should be an array of this thing. So let's try that. Ooh, no. Maybe you do it here. Hmm. That's odd, because it's. I would expect this would work. And I'm going to try ignoring the TypeScript error and see if the program actually works so that we can move on. Okay, so in theory, the data should be sitting in here. And I, I'm just to keep it simple, just, I just want to know if it works for now, right? I'm, I'm not interested in setting up the full pattern yet. I'm just going to send that through the JSON pipe, which is the, the least you have to do to get non-trivial data on the screen in Angular 2. And we will see what happens. Ah, that most certainly did not work. We got a bunch of bad output out. Yeah, it was a circular structure. So that, that's no good. Okay, so how do we go about going from an iterable iterator to an array? Well, I guess we could try asking the Google. So iterable iterator. So what is an iterable iterator? Oh, I don't, do not want the PHP one. Let's look at the ES2015 one and find out what the, I guess, most proper way is to get from there to an array. Hopefully it won't be too awful. Let me see. There's an, yes, I know about the iterable programmer uh, pr protocol. The great thing about this is that you could use this directly in here. And of course, an array already is an iterable iterator. The question is, how do I make an array from one of these. So let's see if there's anybody talking about that in here. Yeah, okay, so I've done this before. You can hand it a map, but how do you get it into an array? Huh. Yeah, not real clear. I mean, we could just use for of. So for the sake of moving on, because I don't want to sit here programming it all day, what we'll do is we will just do a const arr equals my array, and then we'll do for x of this thing. So in theory, that should get us a way to loop over them. And then we will just try pushing these onto that. And I think I was supposed to say let right there. And then uh, it's not an array type or string type. Well, that that's surprising that that didn't go. Okay. Um. Well, I guess we could try looking at another way. So, what is this? What's what is the type of this act? It's just a map. We could simply say for each. That wouldn't be bad. That that would that would get us what we need, right? At least then it wouldn't be this iterable iterator to deal with. So, for each, you give it a callback function that's going to call with each value. So. Uh, looking for yet another way to work around an unexplored bit of the UI. So it's going to be called for each value, and then we're going to simply do this. Let's see if that gets us any closer. Oops, I missed one bit. Okay, so this at least passes types, and let's see if this yields a working screen by the time this comes back up. Uh, oh, I guess I have to... Circular structure. Something is not right. Something is not right. 
we will continue here. Maybe this value is not what we think it is. That's, that seems like a possibility. Love live coding because it's also live debugging. And that's okay. That's how you know it's real. It's, we're not, uh, not just making it up here with canned demos. We're not working off already coded code. Just going straight in to, to see what actually happens. Um, I don't see anything printed. That does not seem right. Um, let's try cutting. Well, we have to do this so that it subscribes to it. Uh, we'll try not JSONing it so we don't get errors. I wonder if my, uh, oh, yeah, it ran. Okay, so we won't worry about that object to object, but as you can see here, nothing actually loop, nothing went through the loop. So that's really important here. So now we know that this ARO, oh, this accumulator didn't have anything in it when it reached me here. Right, so there's because there's nothing, there's data flowing, but nothing printed down here. So nothing got this far. So that's interesting. So let's go here and verify we got this far. So this is typical debugging, by the way. So you'll say, I really want to see what's flowing through my observable chain. And there are some there are some slick tools out there to help you visually see this, but uh, I'm kind of going the old school path and just console logging them out so not this is not great but at least now we should see the data flow through the first step of that object and it did not it did not so so that nothing is even coming this far so i would say we must not actually be subscribing to it ah now i know why not my i didn't say i need to use the async pipe and then send that to json so who knows it probably worked right all along yeah, there are my objects flowing through, so look at that. That's a shame. Okay, so we'll kill that. And now we'll see if we see data flowing through that's closer. Okay, so now it's just coming out null, so data is not flowing through. Okay, so this really this really does tell us things. Okay, so let's try a do here. And this is going to be the map. So I want to see at this point, do, uh, I want to take whatever came and I want to do a console log of the word map followed by that thing so that I will have things flow by here labeled map. So let's see if this works. Do I have any maps flowing by? I do not have any maps flowing by. So this suggests there's a problem with my reducer, oddly enough. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so I wonder if my reducer is even being called. Well, when you wonder if something is happening in code, you just get in there and log it and find out. So console log, label it in some way, and we'll just say, tell me each time you are called by printing out that current value you're called with. So let's see if this is even being called. It is. It is being called. Okay. So what I really would like to know is after this is dealt with, what does the accumulator look like? So I'd like to see the accumulator after each one of these. Okay. And it is. See how I have these maps? I have a, I have a growing map coming through. Okay. So that suggests we're working right there, but we're not seeing the word map appear. So that suggests that the wrong thing is being returned. I think I know what's happening. Uh, at the very beginning here, I said it was taking a shortcut by just returning the same thing. It's possible that I'm not supposed to do that. So let <sighs> new accumulator equal a new map. And if you hand a map, the old map, it will be a shallow copy, so to speak. Uh, and now I'll take that new accumulator and set the value in it, and I'll return the new accumulator instead and see if that gives me any different results. Still not seeing the word map. Very interesting. So I'm still seeing the, I'm, I'm still never seeing this one. I am seeing the R, so I'm seeing this get called, but my reducer is obviously broken in some way because no data is ever getting past the reducer. This makes me wonder if I just plain called the reducer wrong. So let's keep 
looking. What could be what have what could have gone wrong? We'll look at the observable documentation for the reduce function and just study it just a little bit. Okay, so we gotta give it an accumulator. Let me see here. We give it an accumulator function, which is a function that takes an existing accumulator and a new value and it returns a new accumulator. The output is of the type of that ending accumulator and we give it the seeds, we give it the initial value and then it's gonna be called with each new value. Okay, so something must still be awry. So re we have reduce, we brought it in, it's the right name, the parameters in the right order, this is the right way to start it. This function seems to be of the correct type. It takes a accumulator of the type of the map, which is the same type it returns, and it takes a new value. Um, it seems to be returning the right thing. And yet, the rest of the observable chain is not called. So we know that somebody is subscribing to the observable chain because if nobody ever subscribed, this code would never be run and this would never be run. So we know that we're, we're solid that far. Let me see here, what could it be? Is set being done wrong? No, the key and the value are the right type and it returns a new map. Ah. There's the answer. These already have this better semantic. The semantics are already better <clears throat> than they need to be, which actually even tells me that even my, my complex reduce, this, this separate accumulator function wrote, I can probably just make that go away. So let's see if that got me any closer. Nope, didn't get me anywhere. Uh, well, maybe not, maybe not. Console point log. The accumulator value is now ack. So let's see if this something is still awry. This is what you get for, for watching live coding. If you get too bored, just skip to the next video and this problem will have been solved, but I'm gonna keep at it. Okay. So I have a growing map, which is exactly what I would expect to have but I would expect that map to fall out the end of this observable and to pass through this observable. So this appears to be typed correctly, and this, we, we don't think this is ever being run, and we don't think this is ever being run, but we do think this is being run. Okay. okay. I'm gonna pause and go check on something so I don't bore you by reading a whole bunch more documentation. Just a moment. Okay, so that only took a minute or two to study some documentation. The answer is embarrassingly simple. So observables, they're an abstraction over a stream of data, but they're not, they're not an unbounded stream of data. They have a notion of ending, so an observable can finish. Reduce returns its answer at the end, but my incoming stream never finishes. There's a very similar operator called scan, and scan returns all the intermediate values along the way. So now with scan, I should actually have these values flow through and do something a bit more useful. So let's see what happens. So now we're seeing the word map appear. So okay, so that did it. So after all that, <clears throat> a lot of doing, but um, now as I look at this, I could really inline this function and then I wouldn't have to talk about this awkwardly long complex type. So what I really wanna do is have this about it just have this function inside here so I can say take the accumulator and return the result of accumulator dot set actually take the accumulator and then the current value and then return this okay supplied parameters don't match so something is oh I think it's because you need to put that structure. Okay, so now I don't need this separate function. Keep the code nice and simple and short. Okay, so now at this point, I'm getting each new map. In each new map, I'm gonna convert into an array. So now the thing coming out is an array. Now let's go up and take the thing that's on the screen. Should be an array. So let's see how close we are to having an array at the top. What looks like it might have already been there. 
So here we have an array of things and they're, they're not necessarily going to be in a stable order because I don't know how stable that, I don't, I don't know if they're being sorted in any way, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to not worry about that. I'm just going to get them onto the screen. Okay, so this part, this, this running through the async pipe, this belongs in the, let me see here, in, in the smart component. I'm just going to call this list, okay? And then I will go down into the view component and I will catch that list on the way in. Type this correctly for each meaning of the word type. Uh, I'm going to have to do a couple, just a little bit of cleanup there, but I will definitely need the quote type up here. I will need the input identifier. And now at this point, all the observability has been handled and it's just data. Okay, so now in the pair list HTML, now I can, here I can say, let's give this some kind of heading again. So symbol pairs and I'm not quite sure how I want to format these yet. I have a feeling that these are going to end up being put in a table pretty soon here but for the sake of uh, brevity because this video has been going on too long because of my fumble with scan and reduce I'm going to just do this the same way as before. So entry let entry of list and we will simply put list.symbol, which is the symbol pair, or entry.symbol. Because I don't care about all that. Well, we might as well. We'll, we'll have entry point. Um, let's, put the, let's put the bid there. So we have some of the latest information for each one. And see if that's enough to work. I'd like to get just a little bit better data presentation. Okay, so what I really want to see here is that that, that list does not grow anymore. So it, it gets, gets to, okay, so I, four sounds right. I, I think my, my data generator generates four different symbols. So now we have just to kind of overview here. Oh, one more bit before we overview. I sometimes put in console logs while figuring things out. But we do not want to ever leave that kind of mess in place. Um, just a tiny bit of tightening up here. That wasn't really necessary. Um, okay, so there's, there's, there's definitely some improvement possible, a little more research, because I really should not have to work this hard to convert this iterable iterator, or this, uh, this, this map into a list. There should be a pretty easy way to get a map into an array. We can deal with that later, so the program works. Okay, so we have data to review from the top. It flows in using this low-level SSE adapter. It flows from there to this high-level a fake foreign exchange data service that returns an observable series of quotations. Then at the top level of the application, we actually don't do anything at all other than include one instance of my app pair list, two instances of my app pair history. The app pair history we've looked at extensively in the, the previous earlier. So this app pair list, this is the thing we just added. It is a smart view component pair. In the smart component, it grabs that service and it extracts out the data in a different way. You could say that it projects that data in a different way suitable for its use. And then the net result gets stored to an observable property. That observable property gets processed using the async pipe. Therefore, I have no manual subscriptions in here. Therefore, I have no opportunities to break it because it's Angular's job to do the unsubscribing and subscribing, not my job. Um, down here in the view component, I basically have no code, typical of view components. But then in here, I'm, I'm processing the data, but I'm processing it in a way where I don't care about the fact that it was loaded via some service, via some async mechanism. This is now you know, several layers of extraction removed from the incoming data. And the result is this gradually emerging, extremely ugly, uh, for now, uh, way of showing this, uh, this data where I have a list of all my symbol pairs and then the latest bid, and then I have a scrolling series of the two different, of just two that I picked by you know, looking up their, their codes and putting them in there, of the most recent 10 quotes for each. So there's lots of obvious ways to go forward from here, but we will call that good enough for the moment and uh, wrap up for now. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Uh, in the meantime, I certainly encourage people to 
come to Angular Bootcamp if you want to learn a bunch of coding from people like me who do kind of live coding on demand in class. So thanks, everybody.